Um, what is it then with, I mean, with, with chefs, you know, chefs like yourself in, in nice cars and, or, or old car, classic cars? I mean, obviously you, said, you mentioned about Keith Lloyd and yourself have got nice old cars and new cars, but what is it with chefs and cars? Well, I, I don't know. It's probably, uh, it's either chefs, cars, divorces or marriages, one of the two. And that's, <laughs> um, but it's, I, I've, I've been collecting cars for 25 years. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I enjoy it. I enjoy the, 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 the the collecting side of it, the history side of it, the story side of it, but also, to me, they're like moving pieces of art, really. Yeah. And, and when you when you develop in a program, you need to have a narrative to go from A to B. So you need something to get you from one place to another. So yeah. how do you break that narrative up and, and make it interesting for the viewer? So when some of the program is made in the car, so you have to... You can't just drive around in a latest Range Rover and stuff like that. We can, but yeah. so we we try and do something that's kind of iconic. And the two CV in France was iconic. Yeah, the motorbike and the, the Harley, and, yeah. and particularly with this one, when when we set off in the Mini, mm. I said, well, I've, I've been a pilot for twelve years. Let's get involved in flying. And yeah. So we phoned up RAF Lossmouth. We did that, and we flew over to RAF Lossmouth, and then we're trying to work on something for the opening titles. And I said, well. The Mini's iconic, but not as iconic as a Spitfire. Yeah. So we, we phoned up a few people who own a Spitfire, and we, we, we sort of chartered one for a, for, a, for a half an hour, and, and we shot the opening titles over the, the White Cliffs of the South Coast. Oh, so, uh, OK. I'll have to check that. I mean, the guy uh, that... And those kind of things. So it all comes mm. out of the back of just everybody sat in, this, sat in the studio, sat at home going, well, what about this, what about that, yeah. what about this? And, and that's what we developed. We, we developed this format. Um, this one was slightly different because I wanted to pick up chefs along the way because yeah. um, <coughs> to show how, how well, not just chefs but food producers and that kind of stuff yeah. to show how diverse and what's changed in the in the food in the UK. Yeah, because I've got the book here. I mean, it's it's a it's an amazing book to be honest. I'm, I'm not you know being a typical man, I can cook a little bit, um, but. I'm getting into it, and, and your book has got some amazing sort of recipes in there. You know, traditional sort of recipes, traditional, you know, food. Yeah. But well, it's trying to, trying to not, you know, you, there's no point reinventing the wheel. No, no. You know, with British food, what is British food? It's a collection of everything. Yeah. So you have to, you can't reinvent the wheel and, and make it too complicated for people. And, mm. and if you do that, you'll just lose everybody. Yeah. So what we do is we just basically just travel from A to B, um, and whatever we cook on the show is what's in the book. That that is the, the photographs in the book are not redone later on in the year. Oh, okay. That is the stuff I cook. Right. So the stuff that you see with me and the old boy who's the uh, who's the gamekeeper in in Blair Castle. Yeah. That yeah. dish is what I've just cooked. Oh, okay. Uh, and there isn't another one. There's no retake. That is it. Oh, okay. Um, Yeah. Um, otherwise, it's not. You're not honest with the viewer. You're not honest with the supplier. If you've got 15 sea bass right right around the corner, you're having to reshoot it six times. Right. Okay. I mean, it, I mean, it's fantastically shot. I mean, the pictures in the book. I mean, like the sausage rolls, crispy bacon, and a fruity dip, dipping sauce. That yeah. picture is just so enticing. You know. I mean, I'm going to be cooking that myself, preparing that myself. Uh, with some good pictures in there. I mean, so what are, what do you find the main challenges in writing a cookbook these days? Uh, the writing of it is, 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 is over the years, I've, I've kind of, well, the first, first book you write is always the exciting one because that's always your, all your main recipes that you've been doing all your career. But yeah. I think with this one, what, the way I have to work is I work with a good team. Okay. So I, I'm dyslexic for one, so I don't read the auto cue. I, I, so I, I, the way I write the recipe is that I'll sort of type it out, look at it. People know, they don't make any sense of it. But then, then we, we kind of, the, the home economist that works with us, the group of them. Okay. Um, and she's worked with me for 18 years. She sits there and watches me cook it. Okay. And then they test it, and then I try it, and then so we, so we develop it like that rather than. But the first time I ever cook any of the recipes is is on camera. So right. when we roll it. And, and and I say to her, get me a little bit of a little bit more of this, a little bit more of this. I might use this. I might use that. We put it on the table. Yeah. The camera starts rolling. The first time I cook any of those dishes from this program is the first time you see it. Right. So okay. I don't know any of it. Oh, that's and interesting. She's writing on a little stool behind her the recipe while we're doing it. Yeah. So when we come back home, we can then test it when we get back home to make sure it matches what I've done on the sh on the show. But right. Okay. A lot of people think it's testing 
tested and tested and tested and tested. Yeah. None of that. It's literally as real as so the food that I'm, it's on location. And, and I don't know what I'm doing until I get to the location. Jeez. So, yeah, that we, you know, when we go to Scotland or we go to Wales, yeah. I don't know what we're going to be doing until we get to Wales. Oh, uh, okay. So it's not like, um, Mary Barry, you know, some of the shows you see where it's no, already no, like. No, no, because we don't know what we're doing. Yeah, you yeah. Know, Pure talent, that is, mate. It's pure talent for you. Oh, no, it's not. It's just it's 20, 20 odd years of doing live TV. So yeah. having the experience to be able to to do that and be confident about doing it. Yeah, okay. But, but it's all the Saturday shows are all done in one take. We don't do and none of the dishes that we do on the Saturday show are done twice. None of them. Oh, okay, okay. Because it's got to be the real thing. The real thing is always yeah. the best. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that's true. Yes, yeah, I've seen a few ways it has gone wrong. You're right. So yeah, I've seen that a few times. It's what happens. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, I mean, if, if for yourself, then, Jane, I mean, you, you obviously train like, you, you know, like many a chef in France after you left um, college. Um, what makes the French way of on-the-job training so different than that that can be offered here in the UK? Uh, I mean, that particular time of year, we're talking 30-odd years ago, then, yeah. you had to go to France, really. If okay. you go to France, you went to Australia or, or, or abroad to mm. learn the trade. Mm. Plus, you know, London at the time, there was only probably a handful of restaurants where you wanted to go work if you wanted to work at the high end. Um, right, okay. So you went to France because that was the norm. Okay. Um, now it's different. Now you can go to Japan, you can go to Asia, you can go to Australia, you can go to America. You know, it's totally different now. Very, very few chefs go to France, to be honest. But now it's it's open for everywhere. Ah. And, and also, vice versa, they come here. Okay. So, you know, we're now standing at, standing at our own two feet now in terms of the quality of our food in the world. On the global scale, so right, okay. it's, it's different to what it was 30 years ago. Both sides, people want to come here, and also you wanted to go there, but it's very different now. Right, okay, okay. I thought I'd ask because I know, like, because so, many a chef obviously did that, but like you say, it's all changed now. Like now, these days, I guess. Um, is there a part of you that would like to give up the presenting work, or are you happy having both, multiple occupations? I don't have a choice in it, really. At the end of the day, if people watch it, then mm. I'll do another one. Mm. It's it's a weird industry. It's like um, it's an industry that you think you have control over, but you don't. Okay. You have no control over it. It's weird. It's weird. I've got no control over over in my restaurant. I can tweak things and bits mm. and pieces, but mm. but television is you have no control over it at all. It's a production company. You make the program. Yeah. The, the channel asks you to make it. Mm. You make it to the best ability. You hand it over. If it works, you get back. Asked, you get asked back again. If it doesn't work. You don't. Right, okay. Simple as that. Because they've got to look at the viewing figures. They, they, they're not in the business to, dare I say, take a punt. And, and, and you know, that's why, and, you know, there's not many, I don't suppose there's, there's, there's TV chefs now mm. are quite staples. Because yeah. Because there's not the influx that there used to be. They're, they're, there's a lot, and then they disappear. Yeah. But it, it's... It's, it comes down to viewing figures, and that, it's beyond me anyway, um, that kind of stuff, and, and the, how it all works and everything else. I just try and do the best of what you can do, and mm. be passionate about what you can do, because I've always been passionate about food, I've always loved food, I've always, mm. it's my job, you know, yeah, I mean, it's my job all my life. I mean, where did you get the passion from then, in, in, the, in, the, in the early days? It's my job all my life, from a farmer's kid, to yeah. the work ethic from working on the farm, still the same, you know, mm. but I, I, I still love my job, and now there's more responsibility in your job because you employ people. Right, okay. I mean, did you come you've across... Got, a... You've got added responsibilities. Those people have got mm. kids, they've got, you know, um, mortgages and everything else, so they're relying on you as well. So there's an added incentive, an added input, you know. Yeah. I mean, in the early days, and do you have any hurdles you had to sort of get, jump over to get to where you are? I mean, obviously, you know, were your family always, always behind you to get to become no, a chef? Always, they're always behind me. They always are grafters and mm. always were. Right. She still works. So we've always been we've always been grafters, but we've we've I think the benefit is we I had an out, if that makes sense. Yeah. There was no there was no house to go. 
go back to. There was no inheritance yeah. in the house. There was none of that. It's, it's if you want to go, if you want it, you've got to go out and get it. Yeah. And I think that's the key to it. And, and uh, I think that's life of anything, really. I think if you if you know that you've got the golden handshake in 20 years' time or whatever it is, yeah. what, what then incentive have you got to go out and earn it? None. And I think I was quite fortunate with that. I, I, I learned at a young age that the only way to achieve anything as a chef and be successful was to, mm. to leave home and right. to, to go down to London and to travel and, and to see things and to learn. And, and that, that's, that's what made it, really. Right, OK, I understand. Um, I mean, if I didn't say about when you started with, as a, working in the kitchen as a head chef in the early days, I mean, what was the... It's obviously one of the most stressful jobs you could do in a hot, and hot tempered environment to call a workplace. How did you cope? I think you cope. I think I looked at it and go, well, I'd rather be somewhere warm and at least to get something to eat <laughs> than, than working on a farm, getting up at bloody four o'clock in the morning <laughs> and, and, and yeah. doing piglets. That's a big season. Um, <laughs> Yes, obviously, like you say, you're working on the farm as a kid, you know, working hard, then doing yeah, something like that. I, I, I was in the restaurant on Friday, I did a 20 hour shift. Right. 21 hour shift I did Friday. Jesus. Uh, and I finished work at Harvest One, I got back in, I was back in the restaurant for eight, finished at, finished at two, and then drove five hours to another restaurant. Jesus. And I worked there till, till one o'clock in the morning the following day. Bloody it's hell. It's what you do. It's, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, have you still got a, um, a a a passion to open more restaurants or? question i mean it seems that the new generation of chefs are very much competitive does that ever affect you no well that the new generation of, of, of chefs are competitive because they they used to um uh yeah, yeah it's social media now and all that sort of stuff there's a, they're, they're constantly chasing it yeah i yeah. think you'll find that the i dare say the tv chefs really mm. the chefs who appear on television mm. the, the, the core of them right. and the old ones there's no competitive element of it. No, it's okay. just that you do what you do and enjoy what you do. And if people yeah. watch it, they watch it. If they don't, they don't. So there's no, you know, I can't be asked whether I've got 50 followers on Twitter or whether I've got 500 followers. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. I yeah. can't be bothered. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's that if people follow you on the journey, then that's great. If they don't, they don't. It's just, it's that kind of mentality. And I think nowadays it's all about, you know, the, the, the you know, whether you've got how many, whether YouTube things. And, yeah, yeah. You know, which is fine because, the, you know, the viewing systems change now. It, the younger generation don't watch programs like we used to watch. No. Um, and at times when we used to watch, they want to record it and want it, uh, watch it whenever they want to watch it, which is fine. Yeah. It's cool. But I don't get involved in that um, that competitive nature because it's, you know, and, and I never ever follow trends. I, I can't stand no. trends and all this sort of uh, diet stuff and all this. Why can't we just enjoy food? And it's just. Yeah, yeah. The only country in the world that goes through this bloody madness every January and February. <laughs> That's true. It's true, in March it all finishes and we go back to normal again, and then all of a sudden bloody January and February comes out again. Oh no. For God's sake. It's a load of bollocks, sorry. <laughs> oh, I know it is, but I, you, just, you just think it's. But the business you're talking about, like, why don't we just enjoy ourselves, you know? Like, exactly. The French, like the Italians, like the Spanish, they don't, they don't go through this like we, we go through. They must. Yeah, it's like, I mean, it's like, I mean, if it does touch upon, say, ve veganism, and that's quite popular, well, it's been quite popular in January for some, some non obscure reason, vegan area, whatever it's called. Yeah. I mean, what's your take on veganism? Well, it is, I mean, you know, I mean, it's per personal preference, personal yeah. choice, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. I'll never lecture people what they can and can't eat. Yeah. 
can and can't do. Mm. You know, I mean, if you want to eat, there's some amazing producers of veg out there. I, I don't get me wrong, I, yeah. I, I enjoy a plate of bloody beautiful cooked carrots. It's fantastic. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. It doesn't, you know, vegan food can taste amazing. Uh, yeah. Like anything else. But I don't, I don't stand there and lecture people what they should and shouldn't do in their life. If you want to smoke 40 cigarettes a day, that's your call. Yeah. Not up to me to tell you otherwise. You're a grown adult. Yeah. You make your own decisions in life. Yeah. You know, all I can do is put the information out there that this product is aged. Please try it. Now, if you mm. don't want to try it, that's cool because you're vegan. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. But vice versa, if you don't want to eat, if you eat meat and don't like carrots, then we, and I've shown you this amazing recipe using these with a little bit of butter, some sugar, some uh, mm. star anise, you don't have to try it. It's the same thing. It's it's like, you know, it's personal preference. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I think knowledge is a powerful tool if used correctly and I think the problem is now it's bandwagon stuff yeah yeah and, and there is a movement out there don't get me wrong mm. and, and and I think it's it's great it's mm. great but also you've got to imagine if, if it's all of a sudden 60 million people living in the UK turn vegan <laughs> we would be a bit in the shit to produce all those all that veg yeah <laughs> so, so I just think it, it's all a personal opinion I don't have a problem with it no no I'm not I mean, yeah. like, it's, it's personal, like I say, personal choice is, is one thing. 100%, 100%. Yeah. And it's, yeah. just, it's personal choice whether you eat meat, fish, veg, I, I don't care what you, what you eat, as long as you enjoy your food. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. But the same thing with drinking and smoking. I, it's personal preference, mate. Uh, yeah. and, you know, if, you're, if you're 60 or 70 years old and you're on 40 a day, who am I to tell you to? <laughs> yeah. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Yeah. It's just like, I'm not. And the Brits and the Tories, they don't, they don't like being told what to do. No, no. My dad's 75, he still smokes, maybe not 40 a day, maybe 20 a yeah, day. If he enjoys his yeah, life. Yeah, exactly, he's still fit. He enjoys his life, isn't he? Yeah. And if you take those away, that's what he wants to do. So yeah, who, yeah. You know, I, I pay my taxes to look after people like that if they're ill, like I'm ill and, and mm. everything else. It, I don't have a problem with it, it I just mm. don't. Mm. It's a, I, I know we should all eat healthy and balanced, but the balance is not about the stuff that you cook, that's all the stuff that you pre-made, the pre-packing food that I have an issue with. Yeah, the hidden yeah. stuff. You know, we, we don't cook as much as we used to do. We, we're not going to the supermarket and buying fresh fish and cooking. You walk into a supermarket in France and sit in America and see the fish yeah. stall, yeah. the meat stall, it's massive. Yeah, yeah. The veg stall is massive. Well, yeah. they're not, It's not. I mean, I, I mean, I, I'll go off piece, but I, I myself, I cook everything fresh now. I have done for about six months fresh. You know, I mean, I mean everything fresh, um, and I've never felt so better in my, in my life by eating. You know, well, that's the thing. You're cooking, and it's, yeah. it, and it's, 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 it's that's it. And usually you reach for a pizza or a mm. ready-made food, which is nothing wrong with it. Again, there's nothing wrong with it, but yeah, small doses. When you actually start cooking. That's where the issue mm. lies. It's nothing to do with. I don't think to do with uh, anything other than the fact that we don't cook as much food as we, we used to. Yeah. That. It's just education, isn't it? And people just... Uh, well, we like the convenience side of it. We like yeah. to be able to pick up yeah. the delivery and, and something arrives in, in 15 minutes. But, <laughs> well, yeah, but yeah, it's, like, it's convenience of it. It's, yeah. It's, that's what we, that's unfortunately what we're like in this country. Whereas in France and, and Italy and Spain, you sit down and you enjoy your food and you appreciate mm. your food and... Mm. You know, I think is I guess the thing is James you you wouldn't be a chef if you if you didn't have such views you know on on, on cooking food if that makes any sense. I like my food mate but yeah. I also I love a burger now and now and then I don't yeah. I'm partial to it don't get me wrong I'm not yeah. saying don't do it because mm. I do it but it's it's not the same don't do it but every day of the bloody week no no you're no. going to be the size of a house aren't you? Yeah. So <laughs> 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 well, balance. I mean I'm yeah. not the smallest person in the world and I could do with a bit of exercise but I like my culture, <laughs> I like my cream. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> if you take that away from me, you wouldn't want to be in a room with me. You know, I yeah. like it. That's what I like. But then again, I like olive oil, I like fish, I like, you know. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know. So, so what is your go-to food then? Fish and chips, without a shadow of a doubt. Fish yeah. and chips. I, 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 that's, my, that's my nemesis, fish and chips. Okay. Uh, what, chip, uh, chippy from a chippy or home-cooked? Yeah. Home-cooked or from a chippy? From a chippy. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know, but you, do you live down south or you live up north now? Where do you live? I don't know where you live. Well, it's got to be, you've got to have fish and chips up north, sorry, but... Yeah. Yeah, oh no, gosh, yeah, no, I was going to say. the home of fish and chips in my, my point of view. There are some great fish and chip shops, don't get me wrong. But you can't beat up north, I know, I know. But when you've got one in your local area, that's the one you'll always go back to. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? I mean... You said that, I had a Donny kebab the 
the other day to remind me what it was like at college. Oh, my word. It was pretty surreal. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I dread to think what you are like the next day. <laughs> no, you just think, I don't know whether that was a good thing or whether it wasn't. But, you know, you just reminded me of a college days. I thought, you yeah. know what, I'm going to have one of them. It's a bit of fun. You, you, you also had a drink with... You also had a drink beforehand, mate. <laughs> oh, precisely, yeah. <laughs> so, um, if we go back to the book, um, how are all the recipes in there, then? Which one stands out, you know, the best one you, you cooked out there for the series as well, for the book? Uh, I think, well, we did, we did so many different things. Yeah. But, um, out of everything, uh, I think we did, a, we did a chicken Kiev thing that I cooked on the show uh, of this morning. Okay. Uh, Holly and Phil this, this morning, and... Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I did it. I did it. I mean, I mean, uh, we were already about about halfway through the journey. I'd flown. A, I'd flown with the RAF at Lost Mouth. I'd, I'd been crab boating in Scotland. Yeah. Uh, we've been amazing places. And then, then we got to Wales, and um, Langoslin is this place called in Wales. And I've, I've driven a steam train. I've always wanted to drive a train. I got the chance to drive a steam train. Yeah, yeah. And I cooked. I cooked it for the guys who work on the steam line. Oh. Um, but I'd also, that, that particular day, I'd relive my boyhood dream. I've always wanted to do falconry. Okay. Because um, I was really into birds of prey when I was a young nipper. And yeah. And I got to do falconry with these amazing birds of prey mm. um, in the Welsh uh, highlands, the Welsh, well, Welsh valleys and, and the, the, around Snowdonia. Yeah, yeah. And that was like a, yeah, that was, it was a pitch yourself moment. It's pretty sorry. Yeah, it, 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 that was, that was pretty special. Right, yeah, because I'm in, I'm in Wales now. I live in Wales, so that's where I'm calling from. I, I don't. I'm not from Wales, but I, I live in Wales, South Wales. So um, I know the I know the area you mean, anyway. So yeah, we have, you have amazing produce in Wales. That's one of the best meals I've ever eaten in, in England and well, the whole of the UK in Wales, which is I can't remember exactly how to pronounce it. Is it Inisia spelled with a Y? Uh, oh, Inisia. Inisia, yeah. Inisia. Gareth Ward is the chef there. It's phenomenal food there. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, you can't beat it. We're spoiled for choice down here. I mean, it's. it's yeah. You know, I mean, Sean Hill, one yeah. of the legends of the food industry, mm. uh, working at, uh, and running and owning the Walnut Tree. I mean, I mean, yeah. Sean Hill is a legend in my world, mm. absolute legend, and he's basically a doorstep in Wales. Uh, it's a very special place. No, it yeah. is. It's, we, we, we're quite fortunate living here. My wife just says how, spe- how special it is where we live. You know, it's yeah, um, it's the best place, mate. It, it's a, it, it's a, it's an amazing part of the world as well. Um, can I just ask you one last question? I know you're obviously quite busy. Hello? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, I thought, I thought you'd gone then, so. <laughs> um, is there anything you'd change about your career? Anything at all? Uh, not really, I know. It makes you who you are and what you are, isn't it, really? Yeah. And I, I never watch myself on television, and even after 26 years, I never watch it. No way. Seriously? Um, no, I've never watched a single programme that I've never been on from start to finish, never. Bloody hell. Yeah. Everybody would say that. Yeah, yeah. Really, really. Yeah. Um, you value the time that you you had with them, and, and the same thing with my mum. I, I saw my mum every day, and most blokes don't do it. Right. Well, I, I I wish I could. Yeah. Oh yeah. When you, yeah, when they've gone, they're gone. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I still do the same with mine. And, and uh, good. Yeah. Good. That kind of stuff. Really. So I, no, I wouldn't change anything. But um, good. I would probably I would change certain things. The old personal things. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I understand. It's good that you, you're grounded as well, because you sound really grounded, you know, and, you, and you're close to your well, family. You can't be, really. I mean, your parents yeah. are still know them. They, they the fuck off as soon as they look at you. Yeah, that's... You start having illusions of grandeur, that would never happen. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, <laughs> they, 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 they're the first to tell me, you know... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. First to tell me that you, you've been an idiot or whatever it is, and, and rightly so. Yeah, you can't beat Yorkshire people, can you? It's honest. They're honest. Honest, you know, they're yeah. Right, and, Yeah, you have, mate. You have, you have. No, well, well, well. Thank you for your time, James. I appreciate yeah. it. And um, right. I'll, I'll, maybe, maybe I'll speak to you again at some point. But thank you. Thank you very much, boss. Thanks, thanks, James. Thank you, mate. Bye, bye.